Biden. Meanwhile, President Obama, as we mentioned, is in the Gulf today amidst increasing criticism over the disaster aimed at his administration and their response. Meanwhile, there are more fissures in BP's pipes. More reasons why this company got into the mess in the first place. Joining me now with more is investigative journalist Greg Palaz. Now, Greg, you have researched and reported on this company specifically extensively. And first, you say there's another spill that's gotten completely overshadowed by the Gulf spill that is a BP spill. Can you tell us about that? Well, yeah. I mean, you've had uh, you had spill in Alaska, which was just a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago, which is 100,000 gallons. Now, in the old days, 100,000 gallon spill was big news. That that was big stuff. That was coming off of the Alaska pipeline. Most people don't realize that the Alaska pipeline is owned by British Petroleum, just like the head of the consortium that ran the Deepwater Horizon drilling. They're head of the consortium that owns and runs the, the Alaska pipeline. Their pipe burst because they've had endless problems with corrosion on that pipe. It's almost four decades old. Now they want to expand drilling in Alaska uh, offshore. I don't think that they have the ability right now to push that much oil back through that really old rusty pipe. No one is watching the fact that uh, the, they're not watching the, the other spill that happened in Alaska, and they're not watching the spill that's going to happen if we push for more drilling in Alaska. Greg, what's going on with BP? Is there something specific to this company that's a reason why these spills are occurring? I don't want to say that they're absolutely the worst since we've seen, you know, the horror show of Chevron action in the Amazon. We've seen Shell uh, just spill all over the Niger Delta in Nigeria. So I can't say that they're the worst, uh, unfortunately. But BP has had a long history, a kind of culture of neglect. And I've been following them for a little over two decades. They were greatly involved and greatly culpable even in the spill of the Exxon Valdez. It had Exxon's name on the ship, but it was British Petroleum that was in charge of preventing that oil from hitting shore. They didn't do it. They were in charge of having this, the emergency spill equipment around the Exxon Valdez. They didn't have it. Just like in the Gulf, they said they could handle a spill. They couldn't. They couldn't handle it 20 years ago. They had an explosion of spill in Alaska in 2006. They had another spill uh, a week and a half ago, now, and, and obviously they've had the major explosion in the Gulf. This is a culture of neglect driven by penny pinching. They have increased production, yet dropped their production costs by a billion dollars a year. The only way you can drop your costs by a billion dollars and increase your production, you're skipping costs somewhere, and obviously the skipping is going on in safety. Well, and cost cutting is sometimes hailed by investors in a company, and obviously these are publicly traded companies that are reporting earnings to investors. But you say that there's more in what I've read from, from your writings about BP, more about the company culture that is kind of allowed for this, uh, this culture of neglect. What kind of, for lack of a better word, sketchy things have they been up to? Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things that they don't like is people ratting on. They have gone after whistleblowers that they don't like. For example, a heroic figure, actually, is a guy named Dan Lawn, who was the government inspector regulator of the Alaska Pipeline and Shipping Systems in Alaska, for the state of Alaska. Before the Exxon Valdez hit, he said British Petroleum was not prepared for this. Remember, British Petroleum was in charge of preventing and, and containing an oil spill. When he said that the pipeline... British Petroleum's pipeline in Alaska was corroded. It corroded and it exploded. And, you know, he's, he's been talking about this culture of neglect, and what they did is they went out to get him fired. In fact, they got him fired using political pressure. Um, their uh, VP's U.S. chairman was head of the George Bush campaign in Alaska. They used political pressure. They even did something where they took one whistleblower, Chuck Hamill, and they used ex-CIA agents to break into his house and tap his phone, go through his, his house and his belongings and his garbage. A U.S. judge who heard, this, uh, heard about this activity said that British Petroleum was acting like Nazis. That's a quote from the judge, that they, that they were acting like the Nazis. British Petroleum does not treat whistleblowers kindly. If they would listen to the whistleblowers instead of harassing them, maybe these things wouldn't happen. But, of course, then they, if they listen, they'd have to spend some money to fix things.
Well, really quickly, I mean, I just, we don't have a lot of time, but is this just BP or is this part of a broader problem with oil companies? We have a big problem with oil companies. They are worth so much that they feel that they have immunity and impunity. British Petroleum earns six billion dollars every three months. Right. They can absorb this That's cost. A lot of money. You know, they can they can eat this up. And with the new Supreme Court ruling, as your reporter says, even from London, they can dump millions and millions of dollars into U.S. campaigns and baby in politics. It's money that talks. <laughs> Greg, Greg, we're going to have to leave it at, at that line, uh, quite a telling one, and you mentioned $6 billion every three months. I believe it's been about a billion pounds that this oil spill has cost BP. Not, it pales in comparison to the